baseball. Yep. Um, I'm going to start off with the Yankees. Uh, not nothing too crazy this off season, but mm-hmm. um, not nothing t- uh, too ma- major in terms of changes. But obviously, Aaron Judge is a big signing. Uh, got Aaron Judge back nine years, three sixty million dollars. Carlos Rodon six years, sixty two million dollars. Mm-hmm. Got Anthony Rizzo back. Where do you guys think this puts the Yankees heading into the next season? Uh, I think you know it. Got, it kind of puts them in the same place as you know they they were last season they, yeah. they're running they're running back the exact same team maybe a little bit worse in general because you know they get to see the exact same team that they have there's not really many changes they're only getting older yeah mm. they're only getting older there're not many changes that they made uh i think you know the biggest piece the, the two biggest pieces here were was bringing judge back and then signing rodon because i think you know they could definitely use the extra starting pitcher like mm-hmm. I, I think you know that that definitely gives them more boost down the line and I, Aaron Judge coming back to face the franchise kind of keeps the team together. Mm-hmm. So um, I think, you know, I, I still do think, you know, who's going to play left field? Uh, what's what's the left side of the infield going to look like? What are they going to do with their pro- top prospects? And what are they going to do with Isaiah kiner Falefa and Josh Donaldson? I think those are the two biggest question marks. Um, but I, I think, you know, they're, they're kind of in the same spot as, as last season either. Uh, I think not really exactly – the best chance to win the World Series, but, you know, they're, they're division title contenders. That's really all I can say. Well, so, Sebastian, yeah. you talked about that second pitcher that the Yankees need, and we saw yeah. it kind of last year with the Yankees where yeah. they had such a good start, mm-hmm. historic start, never before seen in history, and you have a guy like Garrett Cole, who's your ace, and yeah. you paid the money to be an ace, yeah. but he did not Delivered. perform like an ace yeah. at yeah. certain times in the year when you're putting up six runs getting put up against you in the first inning. That's not going to help your case. No. So bringing in Rodon, I think a guy throws upper 90s, high-energy guy. Lefty. Lefty, right. Um, so there's a lot of positives there, and I think that was definitely a hole the Yankees had to fill. And, you know, especially with Montas probably not going to be ready for opening day. Cortez is money, but you never really know. With a guy like that who isn't going to overpower you, what he can be year to year. But, yeah, very great move by the Yankees in getting Rodon for sure. Yeah, I feel like Cole, Rodon, Cortez, now you have, like, a more championship caliber rotation, even though obviously Cole, I, w- I wouldn't say he's a completely just a shell of what he used to be. I want to say he completely fell off, but he's not, you know, Astros Garrett Cole mm-hmm. anymore. He, he's, you know, he's, he's a little bit watered down, but he can still go right. And then For now sure. you have, but behind him, you need a little bit more depth with, which I feel like they're getting now. And I feel like you can go into, you know, more games without being worried. Like, Oh my God, this guy is going to, you know, give up, three runs in the first inning and then we're going to play catch up and then mm-hmm. one morning scored in, uh one more run scored in the seventh for the other team and it's over which is I feel like that that's a pattern we've seen with the Yankees just you know starting pitcher comes in and then boom there goes you know a few runs in the first three innings and suddenly now it's just like you know um you're you're playing to get back into the game and I feel like I mean that that's that's how they lose a lot of games and that's why they struggle in the playoffs sometimes but I'm going to go out and say that, in my opinion, I still feel like this Yankees team is not enough to come back and beat the Astros because they literally just got swept. Mm -hmm. And, right, Judge, that's not a change. Rizzo, it's not a change. Yeah, you added Rodon. The Astros lost Verlander. But from from just getting swept by this team, I think you need more than that to change it. I think, you know, part of the problem with that is, too, it's like you have to put it together. Like that 2019 team. They they hit really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, this this year is the more recent teams. They have better pitching. The problem right now is that their hitting is not good enough, yeah. the, especially yeah. come postseason time. Like I think their hitting is good enough to do well in the regular season. Their hitting is not good enough to beat the Astros. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the case. What you saw. Not. That's hitting. What that's, that's kind of what you saw last year. You know, and last year in the postseason, the Yankees hit one sixty three. Their ERA, their ERA was their team ERA was phenomenal. It was three twenty eight. So I don't think their pitching was exactly a the biggest their biggest problem i think their biggest problem was you know the their bottom of their lineup their bottom of the lineup just flat out could not hit and the astros the added you know 2019 mvp jose abreu to their team they, they just yep. got a whole lot better yeah they and did it's like fill the whole first base yeah so i mean if you're the yankees you got to be thinking this is our division to win you cannot this is your division to lose rather yeah um yeah. because uh, you look around the al east it's like you have the Blue Jays, who historically seem to choke in the playoffs for no reason. Yep. And you have the Orioles, who are an up-and-coming. They're going to be one of the better teams in baseball, hopefully. Next. Probably three, four years, we'll start to see the real fruition of them. Um, 
And then the Red Sox, you know, I don't see them being much this year, but, you know, an 80, 85 win ceiling team for them. So it's really, for the Yankees, it's like, we got to go all in now. Yeah. And there's no time to really just mm-hmm. sit back and hope Judge can carry us to the promised land. You need hitting up and down the lineup. You can't, yeah, yeah. You especially can't rel- to compete with the Astros, yeah. you know? You can't rely on one guy every yeah, single time. absolutely not. And I think a guy like Rizzo, um, I think that was one of the more important, second to Judge, um, yeah. s- things that they had to get done this offseason because Rizzo, with the fielding that he gives you, he also gives yeah. you the power from the left side he's of the plate. A and at Yankee Stadium, you cannot, you know, take that for granted. So. And, he's, and he's also a World Series winner. I mean, he yeah. won with the Cubs. He knows the experience of being there, mm-hmm. playing the postseason. I mean, Judge, you know, he struggled in the postseason last year. He uh, Every he, year. He, yeah, yeah, almost every year, basically, yeah. So I feel like the only, I mean, the only two hitters that really show up in the postseason last year, Rizzo and Stanton. So, yeah. And uh, I, I think that the team, like, the Yankees have never really been able to hit with the bottom of their lineup in the postseason yeah. in the past six years that they've been there. So I, I think, you know, fixing the bottom of their lineup, especially the, which is consistent of the left side of their infield and their left fielder. So. Yeah, it's going to co- really come down to can the young guys, um, coupled with the veterans like a Stanton, can, they, can Stanton provide? And that's something that we kind of see playoff Stanton go off, but where's regular season Stanton not playing, yep. you know, being a burden to the team? It's going to come down to Oswaldo Cabrera. It's going to come down to Oswald Peraza. It's going to come down to Trevino, the bottom of the order guys. Yep. Can they get it done? Can they turn the lineup over? DJ LeMahieu, can he stay healthy? Yeah, that's, um, a, that's a big. You know, that's a really big. He's question. great when he's healthy. Yes. and firing on all cylinders. Well, he's also. He's but when al- he's not there, then that that's a big hole, right? Yeah. and and think the judge it. does not know how to fill in the postseason. Mm-hmm. And and think about it too. DJ LeMahieu has not played in the postseason in the past two years. I mean, last yeah. year he was. Concerning a toe injury, he decided not to get surgery this off season. So you kind of have to wonder. Like I think Yankee fans are forgetting a little bit that he had the toe injury. You kind of have to wonder if that's going to affect him at all during the yeah. season. And he is aging too. He's almost. I think I believe this year he turns 35 years old. He's still got four years left on his contract. So I I, I believe this is a little bit of a concern. You have mm-hmm. to be con- you have to be concerned if you're the Yankees about DJ Lemayhew. Yeah, I, yeah, I I feel like, you know. I don't see any reason to to expect anything different from the Yankees because it it's always you know their pattern of being you know the big spenders the big team right mm-hmm. you go out and sign Judge to a big deal you have Stanton on big on a big deal right you get you get Garrett Cole on a big deal and then you know as as you progress throughout time then those players start to age and then you kind of see that right and then. You know, it's like a little bit of a slowdown period, and then you just go out and, sp- and, and spend some more. And, you know, you might have, like, a, pro- a young and up- up-and-coming prospect, but I feel like there's never that, like, that feeling of a homegrown young team that's, like, hungry and, you know, th- this team can... It's it, There's never a team that's built like the Astros with the Yankees. Even though they have the money to spend, it always just feels like they're just signing people from other teams for big money, you know, eight year, nine year, ten year deals and then eventually it just doesn't work out because for whatever reason and they choke choke in the playoffs. Like Aaron Judge, that that's one of my concerns with him. Aaron Judge, yeah, he's a great player, MVP caliber player during the regular season, but that doesn't mean anything if he's just not gonna perform in the postseason. And that's one of like personally as a Yankees fan, my concern and I don't know if Sebastian shares this as a Yankees fan, but that's one of my concerns as a as a Yankees fan. You sign him to a $40 million a year deal. Does he show that he's worth it, or does he just continue this pattern? I mean, you know, Aaron Judge in the postseason, I, I believe he'll turn it around. I mean, you saw you saw signs of it in 2018 and 2019. I think those were those were by far his two best years in the postseason. And even his rookie year, he wasn't even – like he, he was better against the Astros than he was early on. He started off over, I think, over 20? No, over 11 that postseason. You know, he's one for 20. That – Start off one for twenty that postseason, set the strikeout record in the division series. So I, but I think that I don't think you have to worry about Aaron Judge. I just think that you know you kind of bring up the homegrown part, and this is what I think. You know, the Houston Astros are better at building up their players. You get a guy like Jose Altuve who's homegrown, Jordan Alvarez who's homegrown, and even like Carlos Correa, he's homegrown too. He signs elsewhere. Jeremy Pena, up and coming, World ALCS MVP, Stud. World Series MVP, he's homegrown. Nobody really expected him to what the play to play that the way he played, yeah. and you know I think that the Yankees, you know their best chance at winning this twenty the World Series was twenty seventeen because a lot yeah. of their mm-hmm. players were homegrown. 
That's really why. And nobody really expected them to win that year. So and I think right now they're going off on a limb and signing all these players to big contracts. And although may, maybe some of them will pan out, maybe Garrett Cole. Like, may, hopefully Garrett Cole finds it next year. But, you know, Garrett Cole, Garrett Cole has had problems this year giving up the home run ball, and he's had problems with that in recent years as well. So he's got six years left on his contract. And, you know, would, would you consider him an ace at this point? Like, yeah, I mean, his ERA was much higher than it really should have been, 3.5. So I think, you know, there, there are a lot of questions. I'd say there are a lot of question marks. Definitely a lot. If you're of, the Yankees. I mean, definitely a lot of question marks. Um, and we talk about high spending, what the Yankees are doing. This might make both of you sick, but how would I feel? If, how would you guys feel if I told you that combined Aaron Hicks and Josh Donaldson are getting thirty-one million? Terrible, awful. awful. That is thirty-one million dollars that the Yankees don't have because yeah. they're paying it to two guys who shouldn't even be in the league. Yep. Yeah. No, Josh. Josh Donaldson. It, it just irritates me because he. It's so easy. He just has to not be blind. Yeah. And watch as. The, and, and, and run, and then when you see the home run ball go over, then you can start, you know, slow well, that's home run yeah. instead of just being <laughs> like, oh, yeah, bat flip, and then, oh, no, it's not a home run, and then you get a single or you get thrown out. A whole five-minute compilation of just Josh Donaldson videos of uh, bat flipping too soon. So. Josh Donaldson is the definition of a trash talker. That's what he is. Yeah. And yeah. earlier in his career, he could easily back it up. I mean, yeah. he was just a phenomenal he was just a phenomenal player, especially his time with the Blue Jays against the Yankees. Mm-hmm. Now, now, like I, I believe that you can talk trash as long as you back it up. And right now, you, he's, he cannot back it up because he has not really been good offensively. I'm, Defensively, he's one of the top players in the MLB, but offensively, he he was atrocious last yeah, year. His was, timing he was, was, he was really atro- off. He was atrocious last year. And, really off. And come to postseason time, I don't think he. Can, I don't like to be personally honest. I don't think he really cared at all. So. I, I don't I, think he really cared at all. I 100% agree. I mean, because when you have a hot leg kick like that, you really got to learn when you get older that speeds are going to get faster and you're going to your body is slower than it once was so yep. you really can't catch it and we saw that with Donaldson he's just not being able to catch up to fastballs nope. you could throw a 90 mile an hour fastball right past him nope. he wouldn't be able to hit it nope. so it's tough if you're a Yankees fan you know what do you do with some of these guys and then you got these young guys coming up the pike and it's like how does it all balance out and you have such high potential for the yep. Yankees as you do every year but mm-hmm. and rightfully so yeah, but yeah it's it's a, again a lot of question marks for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's just I mean the Yankees again. I said this earlier. They're only I feel like at this point they're they're going to become known for being that team that is not. They're not going to be the you know the World Series winning team that they once were. They're just going to be that team that's always there deep in the postseason, maybe ALDS, ALCS, but they just can't get past the Astros or like maybe there will be a year where they do make it and then they'll get beaten by the Dodgers or something like that. <laughs> I feel like that's just going to be like the pattern. Yeah, but. I'm going to move or across. the Mets, yeah. You could get beat yeah. by the Mets, too. Oh, that's true, because ne- that's the next team we're going to talk about who 